And as we hit 4 o'clock on this Thursday afternoon, we'll start with breaking news. An investigation in Douglas County where authorities say three people have been found dead. They were found in two locations. Nine News reporter Rachel Krause joins us live from Parker. Rachel, police just ended a press conference, I mean, moments ago. What updates are they telling you? Yeah, Alex, we were able to hear from the Doug Coe Sheriff's Department as well as Parker Police. And what we know about the situation is that this all started in unincorporated Parker after 8 this morning when someone called in to say they'd found a body. Now, Doug Coe Sheriff's deputies responded. They found the body of a man and a boy near a popular incline trailhead just off Ancestry Drive. That then led them to have Parker Police conduct a welfare check here in Parker off Black Wolf Drive. There, police found a woman dead and investigators smelled natural gas. They left the home and evacuated the area for safety, but police say there's no larger threat to the public here. There is no danger to the community. We do not believe we have anybody out there that we are looking for. Uh, we believe that we have identified uh, everybody that's directly involved. Mark, I'm going to step out of the way. Now, five hours later, investigators are still out. They are gathering evidence and you can see behind me here. They do still have a large chunk of this home here blocked off. We have seen investigators out here taking photos inside the garage area of gas meters out around near the home. They have this part of the front of the house blocked off. They also have part of the house behind in the backyard blocked off and a, and a police officer parked out there with their cruiser. Now, neighbors in the area tell me that two adults lived here with their son. Police would not confirm if all three victims were indeed related or if they were indeed the family who lived here. They say that information will need to come from the coroner's office once they are able to determine their cause of death, but they are conducting all three deaths as a death investigation. This is very much still an active investigation, both for Parker Police and the Doug Coe Sheriff's Office. They're asking anyone with any information to contact police. All right, a lot of questions still surrounding this unfolding investigation. Rachel, thanks for being out there. Bring us any updates as you get them. We're sitting in the mid-teens right now, but it's going to get colder. Extreme cold weather coming to Colorado. You take a live look now at the Eisenhower Johnson Tunnels. It's always cold up there. The mountains are expecting some heavy snow from this storm as well. We want to show you this a live look at the snow cam at Steamboat Springs. I mean, this ski resort reported 11 inches of fresh snow in the past 24 hours and a few more feet, not inches, but a few more feet are in the forecast for this area. It almost doesn't look real. How much snow is that? <laughs> it's it's incredible. A couple of feet. Let's get over to Lauren <laughs> Robinson and talk about the heavy weather moving throughout most of the state. That's right. We are getting a wintry blast. The high country is going to expect more snow, maybe even double what has already fallen in the area. And we're going to expect very cold temperatures as we move our way across the rest of the Front Range and Eastern Plains. Now, it's kind of hard to see from this distance, but all of this is lit in purple. This is all going to be uh, wind chill alerts throughout the entire Front Range and Eastern Plains. We have watches, warnings and advisories all across the state. Really what all of these are saying is over the next few days, we're going to watch for temperatures and winds to combine to make it feel like anywhere from negative 20 degrees to negative 30 degrees. It is going to be extremely even dangerously cold as we move our way all the way into MLK Day on Monday. Now, as far as that snow in the high country, we do have a winter storm warning that goes into effect this evening until Saturday evening. We also have some winter weather advisories that are lingering for the next hour or so. All of these areas can expect more snow. We've seen nearly a foot of snow already in the high country. Well, we're expecting another foot. Some total or uh, some higher elevations could see higher totals as well. Now, as we take a look at our avalanche warnings, of course, with all of this fresh snow, you do want to be prepared for the possibility of avalanche dangers. We do have a warning in effect through Monday morning near Crested Butte. This is going to be a level four out of five high danger. You want to stay out of these backcountry areas. As for the rest of the state, I'll go into more details on all of the uh, extreme snow we could see and extreme cold we could feel over the next few days. All right, a lot of important information. We'll check with you in just a bit. Affordable housing, public safety, and education. Those are just some of the areas that Colorado Governor Jared Polis was focusing on today in his sixth State of the State speech. In outlining his goals for the year, the governor noted the mounting pressure and doubt about the future of livability in Colorado's neighborhoods. 83% of Colorado parents worry that their children won't be able to afford to live here. I hear from older Coloradans who fear they won't be able to age in the communities that they call home or won't be able to downsize because even though their house might have increased in value, 
high interest rates and property taxes prevent them from affording even a smaller home. That's why I hope that this session we can work to finally make the senior homestead exemption portable. Much more coverage of the state of the state coming up at 5 o'clock as well as at 6 on Next with Kyle Clark. You can also see more coverage on our 9 News app. A Broomfield officer is on administrative leave after shooting and killing a suspect. This happened last night right outside an apartment complex near Highway 287 and 6th Avenue. Broomfield police say it started as a domestic related incident. Our crew spoke with a neighbor who heard people running in the hallway and some kind of altercation with police shouting stop. Then police told them to stay inside because there was indeed a shooting. The officer was not injured. The suspect was taken to a hospital where they later died. We failed Elijah McLean as a department. We failed Mrs. McLean as a department. We failed our community as a department. Some powerful words today from Aurora's interim police chief, Art Acevedo. They came less than a week after a former Aurora officer was ordered to jail for his role in Elijah McLean's death. Of course, officers subdued and restrained Elijah McLean in 2019 after a 911 call had come in. The caller reporting that he seemed sketchy Paramedics would ultimately inject him with the sedative ketamine. He died three days later. He was doing nothing wrong. He wasn't armed when he was stopped. Investigative reporter Kevin Vaughn joining us live from the newsroom today. Uh, Kevin, this was the first time Chief Acevedo has addressed McLean's death at all, at least since the trials of the officers and the paramedics involved. Alex, the chief called this press conference to discuss crime trends, but he took questions on numerous topics, and he didn't hold back when it came to the confrontation that ended with Elijah McLean's death. Juries acquitted two Aurora police officers of wrongdoing in that incident, but another officer and two paramedics were all convicted of felonies. Today, Acevedo laid the blame not on those at the scene that night, but on those leading the department when it happened. The biggest failure was the leadership of this department and we had leaders in this department that were not interested in the success of their men and women they weren't interested in my opinion in the success of our relationship with the community they're they uh, they are just people that were just interested in whatever interests them now one of those officers who is acquitted has told the city he wants to return to the police force acevedo said today however that he is currently on personal leave and it's still not clear when or if he'll be back in uniform. Tom? Interesting to hear uh, Chief Acevedo talking about this, Kevin. Is, is there, will there be more? Does he have more to say about this that we might get in, in a sit down with him sometime soon? I think so. I mean, he's talked, he talked extensively today about training and about the failures of training in this case. And uh, changing the culture there is something that he's talked about. So, yeah, I think so. We shall see. All right. Thanks, Kevin. One person was injured in an early morning fire in Aurora. Fire crews did respond just before 2 a.m. on North Scranton Street. That's just north of the Anschutz Medical Campus in Aurora. Firefighters say they were able to put that fire out quickly. One person who was inside was taken to the hospital. The cause of that fire still under investigation. Like we've been talking about, and Lauren just kind of went in detail about, we are getting ready for an Arctic blast, bringing in some dangerously cold weather this weekend. There are some ways that you can prepare yourself ahead of those low temperatures. You want to make sure that you leave your water on, at least so there's a, a slight little constant drip going. That might save your pipes from freezing and keep you from expensive repairs. Also, open your cabinet doors. It allows room temperature air to warm your pipes. It's also best to keep your heat at 55 degrees or above, and if you can close your foundation vents you want to do that. Now if you're going to be out in the freezing temperatures for whatever reason just watch out for frostbite. You'll see some red pale skin. Uh, you can experience some numbness. You can also get muscle stiffness. If it is severe the skin will start to blister and you'll need to see a doctor right away. But mild frostbite can be treated at home with a bit of warm water.